Welcome to The Pulse with Peter B. I'm your host, Peter Biancomano. Let's get you to The Pulse on everything you need to know. And we're here at the beautiful Pilsner House and Beer Garden located at 1422 Grand Street in Hoboken, New Jersey. And we're so glad to be joined by a member of the management team here, and that's Mr. Vince Chrysler. Vince, how are you today? Good, Peter. Doing well. Thanks so much for coming by. I appreciate it. I have to tell you, Vince, you know, it's, it's, it's when the Pilsner House and Beer Garden opened, I feel like people were like, oh, you know, who's really going to go to the back of the town right. at a place? But I feel like it, it's it's almost uh, perfect for this side of town, correct? It is. It is. Because this is a warehouse look to it. And when this first was built here, nobody was here. You know, there was a risk taken to uh, to be here. And just having this open space, being able now have a open space outside, it's a great opportunity. We don't have a lot of the neighbors, so we could be a little bit more louder if you need to. But we, we like to have a good time and, and draw a lot of people. Good parking up this area, too. Absolutely fantastic parking, and yeah. I think that's the, uh, such a benefit here. It really just fits into the neighborhood, no we'll doubt. just say. No doubt. Absolutely, absolutely. So now, obviously, because of COVID-19, there are many different new regulations that yeah. you have to follow. And you kind of hit the nail on the head before when you said that you had a lot of outdoor seating, which is yeah. good. Yeah, well, um, it makes up for all the stuff that we have out inside that we can't use. Exactly. You know? And so it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge here in COVID, just like every restaurant tour knows. You know, it's... Everything is harder. Everything is a different thought that you've never thought before. I've been doing this a long time, and I'm dealing with things I've never thought I'd deal with. Exactly. Now, let me ask you that, Vince, because, I mean, obviously, you know, you are lucky enough where your tables are socially distant here. Yeah and that you can follow a lot of the regulations. And I wouldn't say that it's less of a challenge than other restaurants had, yep. but certainly, you know, um, you added more tables on a sidewalk, which of course everybody can do. Do you feel as if it is a little more challenging from a management standpoint and a server standpoint because of the extra tables that you have on the sidewalk yeah. and on the side of the building here. Yeah, because they have to come out further. You know, your POS system is pretty much stays where it is. So you've got to go all the way into that POS system. So that server might be, you know, we, we get some servers with 15 to 17,000 steps a day. Oh my That's goodness. crazy, you know, but they're coming all the way out here and they're serving this way. So we, we've had to adjust just our numbers as far as staff to be able to fit to, to get everybody out to the, to the areas out here so yeah you got to change everything your mindset mm -hmm. you really really do and what, what I find amazing folks is and I come here a lot Vince knows yeah. I was here this past or last weekend <laughs> I mean um, is that the beer is still cold when it gets to my table fence they I were mean, I don't know what you're doing what you're telling your servers but I mean it's a long walk it is. in the heat it is. for beer correct yeah yeah no I mean they walk fast you know because <laughs> those steins are heavy if you've seen them they're heavy so it's kind of like get out of their way they gotta go so it is it's a it's a system and and you got to have great staff who buy into what you're doing and we take good care of them we we try to protect them by keeping a very safe environment every table is wiped down with antibacterial wipes so it's not a, a rag wiping it down where you put it on the side and you're leaving it there and then you're wiping the next table we have antibacterial wipes on every time we wipe that table it gets crazy it does get but crazy. you got to do it so of course you're known for your beer here and how many beers would you say craft beers that is yeah. that you have on tap here so on tap there's 20. wow so Unbelievable. yeah great opportunity but you to also do. get bottles that you yeah. probably wouldn't find in any other bar in hoboken correct? no doubt no we're really pushing the idea of of really crazy beers that you can't find everywhere else we want people to come and say hey i came to you know if you put the beer uh, beer garden on the uh, menu you better make sure you could deliver on beer and so we <laughs> we've got a great opportunity with some great uh, you know all now you got craft brewers you've got a great industry right. that's really booming and we take full advantage of that that's, that's for sure it's fantastic and obviously the space is beneficial here for you guys to have you know your kegs and your brewing that's uh, right that's right and, and uh, one of the most underrated things that i think uh, 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 people don't know about in Hoboken, but I certainly know about it, is the food here at the Beer Garden. Yeah. I think the yeah. food is absolutely fantastic. Awesome. I mean, you have the grill going at all times. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Um, have you seen yourself actually making updates to the menu in sure. terms of COVID now or uh, or just, you know, because there's outdoor seating and so yeah. on and so forth? Any updates to the menu? Great question, because, I mean, right now, you can, you know, you want items that aren't too heavy. And, and typically a German cuisine wouldn't 
be a heavier dish. So we've gone to things like fish and chips, or we've gone to things with ribs. Don't let that, the Germans know yeah, that. No, <laughs> exactly, right? Well, you know, so we, we try to make it a little bit for everybody, but also in this environment, you want We've got four or five salads on the menu, Looking you know, so we want to make sure that everybody has something here. So that's our goal. But is it like salads with a twist? Yeah, <laughs> so we've got a cucumber salad, with, mm. or a, uh, we got a watermelon salad oh. that uh, is really refreshing. And, and, and that'll you probably find change. That in, in Germany. I've been in Germany plenty of times, and I've had watermelon yeah, salad. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, they're traditional, but they're also something that's refreshing for the season. And we'll change the menu seasonally. Once we start getting into the fall, you'll see different menu items. Exactly. Yeah. And let me ask you a question. Of course, the other day, the governor office announced that indoor seating will hopefully be open oh. September 14th. What? Where? I mean, just uh, it was life changer. Your ears. Life changer. I mean, that is honestly everything for us is that, uh, you know, we, we need that. You know, we're a big place, you know, so to be able to just get a you know, 20%, 25% is, is just a huge opportunity and for I, us. I was just curious, your indoor capacity is how many people? We've got over 400 and Whew. So look at that, 20% will yeah. be, if my math is correct, about 100 and some odd people. Yeah, so that's right. Math that's is right. not my strong, just yeah. I'm in journalism. No, it's all good, it's all good. No. You're about right. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that that's that's phenomenal. Now, Vin, or Vin, excuse me, I know I've called you good. Vin before, but I'll I've seen you it. on the street. I take it. Exactly, just not Vinny, right? Yeah, just not Vinny. My mother would be angry. <laughs> ah, you know, oh, she'd be angry. Right, that's the right. one she doesn't <laughs> accept. So Vin, you know, one of the things that I've always known you about, and by the way, Vince is one, just an overall extremely nice guy. Yeah. You need to come see him Jeez, here at the beer Garden. Everywhere I've seen him on the street, he makes it a point to say hello to me and, and all that good stuff. You got a great family, oh, you know. I, I mean, that. this family, your family, is everything in this town, and and people know it. And I, and I appreciate that. that. And I'm sure they appreciate that yeah. as well. Oh, so, so Vince, um, you had a catering business, or you have a catering business? Yep. I should say you still have the catering business. I do. What's it called? What type of catering can you provide to our audience here? Yeah. So Skyline Hospitality is a company that I started a while ago, and we do. Uh, you know, we go to people's houses, we cater right to, uh, you know, whether it be a birthday party at your house on a roof deck or something like that. But we also have a lot of corporate business. So we have a lot of companies here who are struggling right now. Unfortunately, they're not able to, to open their offices. But, you know, those were clients that we were doing a lot of business with. Um, so, you know, corporate and private, um, great opportunity to take the business on you know, outside and, and to, to people's homes. And anybody that wants more information, do you have a website, I'm yeah, sure? Yeah, so no, definitely. You can you can definitely hit us at pilsnerhouse.com and you can find us all the way through. But, uh, oh, you and know, your catering company's linked. Yeah, oh, and Colo Perfect. Club uh, is, is part of our Which catering right company upstairs, as well. Right. And so there's a great event space. We've got over 10,000 square feet upstairs. So all linked together uh, with the Colo Club and, and Pilsner House. Very, very cool. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question here. So obviously October's coming up, the fall is yeah. coming up. The biggest beer, although I think you could drink beer at any time, but anyway, yeah. but obviously you think of uh, October, you think of Oktoberfest. Yeah. Any type of events coming uh, up that you want to preview? See, now events? there's a little secret there. I've got to hold off a little bit. Okay. But I will tell you, yes, we have some big plans coming for Oktoberfest. We're really excited. Uh, we're going to wait a couple days to uh, let you know, but find us on Instagram. Facebook pages will come out, and uh, we hope to really make a big splash. All right, and we'll put all that information at the bottom of your screen. And and here is the most important question I'm going to ask you, Vince, oh. because, you know, he annoys the crap out of me every week here on The Pulse, <laughs> and that is Josh Sotomayor Einstein. He is one of your biggest customers here yes. at the Beer Garden, yeah. correct? Don't you guys just get annoyed with him? Tell me the truth. We, we try to be nice, you know, I mean, he's a friend of yours, you know, I so mean, we, you yeah. know, we try to be nice, yeah. you know, we're, you know, we'd be nice to everybody. <laughs> You'd be nice to everybody. <laughs> anyway, I like that. Well, Vince Chrysler, one of the managing partners here at the Beer Garden. Thank you for having us today. Thanks, Peter. I appreciate it. This I is mean, awesome. Could we uh, maybe come back during Oktoberfest? Uh, yeah, there's going to be room. There's going to be room. So There's let's going do it. to be room. I hope not too much room. Exactly. Really quickly, your hours for uh, the people at home. So yeah, during the week we usually open around 3 o'clock. We close by 10 or 11 depending on obviously the hours that are set by the town. And on the weekends we open for brunch. Saturday and Sunday we open up by 11 o'clock. And we're going to uh, 11, 12 o'clock depending on the night. All right, Vince Chrysler, thank you so much again Thanks, for joining Peter. us. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Folks, we Thanks will be so right back. Thinking about a family vacation or class reunion? Are you stressed over whether or not you should take a vacation? M-Share Family Fun Travel is a full-service travel agency specializing in family and group travel dedicated to ensure you're provided with the right options 
to meet your travel needs. I'm Dottie Smith, and I've been servicing clients in New Jersey, Philadelphia, Florida, and California. So I'm here to help you make your travel experience a memorable one. M-Share Family Fun Travel, cherish today for tomorrow's memories. Welcome back. We're here at the beautiful Beer Garden in Hoboken. I'm Eric Artbert, here with the resident Beer Garden regular, Josh Sotomayor Einstein. Josh, how are you today? Good, yourself? Doing great, doing great. So we'll get right into the news of the week. Uh, Governor Murphy in, on Tuesday announced his new budget uh, for the year uh, post-COVID. Uh, it includes eight new tax increases and $4 billion in borrowing, uh, including a $4.9 billion contribution to the state worker pension system, the largest in state history. Uh, Josh, uh, what do you think? Well, I, I know my wallet feels a little bit lighter, and I'm sure uh, <laughs> the residents of New Jersey uh, voters, uh, new Americans, longtime Jerseyans uh, feel unfortunately lighter in their wallet uh, at these times. I think it's unconscionable for our governor to uh, constantly fetch and moan that these are unprecedented times, which they are, uh, but then for him to say, uh, because everyone is suffering, I want to make the, uh, the average taxpayer of New Jersey suffer even more by reaching further into his pocket. And it's optional. He doesn't have to do this. He could trim government, but instead he's choosing just to trim his core constituency, you know, the, the government employee at the expense of everyone in New Jersey. Well, Josh, you're right. The startling thing about this budget is there really are no significant cuts, uh, very little belt tightening, uh, and yet more spending and greater taxes and an incredible amount of borrowing. You know, we're still paying hundreds of millions of dollars each year to pay off the borrowing that Christy Todd Whitman did over 20 years ago. Uh, this will add exponentially to that and be expensive for taxpayers uh, now and for generations to come. Although in New Jersey, with the highest property taxes in the country already, uh, I guess we should be used to that type of, uh, of government. I mean, listen, COVID has killed uh, a ton of jobs and, and a ton of businesses, especially small businesses. Uh, and now Murphy is going to make it harder for employers of small, medium, and large scale to set up shop in New Jersey or continue to do business in New Jersey. He's giving people an economic incentive to get out. Uh, and it's not like New Jersey was ever really that well governed, but Murphy is taking that as like a challenge. He's like, challenge accepted. I will make it at least twice as worse before I leave. I think twice would be lucky. Um, but you bring up a good point, Josh. There is news on the COVID front. The governor has announced that as of September 1st, uh, gyms will be able to open at 25% capacity. Uh, this is welcome news to some gym owners, although others say too little too late. Uh, it comes after a pretty public fight with Attila's Gym in Belmar and others. Um, but still no movement yet on indoor dining for folks like the Beer Garden. Uh, and certainly no uh, voting in person today. The uh, d legislature passed a bill uh, to pr prohibit uh, in-person voting. Well, I, I think uh, I'm very happy for the gyms. I, I do think for a lot of them, uh, it's too little too late. I know I've heard of plenty of gyms and other small businesses going under. Uh, I personally will continue not to go to a gym, but not because of COVID, <laughs> just because working out is a lot of work. And 100% of people that work out die. So it's just science, as our uh, feckless governor likes to say, feckless Phil. Uh, That's why they don't have you on the science segment. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. So, but when it comes to uh, indoor dining uh, and in-person voting, you know, I've heard a lot of people that aren't, uh, you know, like myself to the right, but a lot of people that are moderates or even towards the center say or postulate that, you know, Murphy wants to keep indoor dining closed until November so that he has a reason to say you can't do uh, in-person voting. And I think uh, if it's true, it's absolutely ridiculous. Well, certainly, uh, you know, I think many people are scratching their heads about this in-person voting uh, not being able to do it. We can stand in line at the grocery store, we can stand in line at the liquor store, and yet uh, somehow we're unable to vote. Most significantly, uh, he expects us to stand in line at the DMV. And I know I've had those headaches. I know I'm talking to a lot of folks who have had those headaches who find it simply ridiculous. You know, the governor refused to furlough uh, anybody for the first four months when the offices were totally closed and only began furloughing uh, individuals once the week that those offices were supposed to open. When it would have been easy to count just how many people would need licenses and the like. Um, and so those offices has, uh, have operated at uh, less than full staff ever since. And you've seen the result. Hour-long lines, people sleeping over, people paying other people to sleep over. And so it's, uh, it's curious and head-scratching for folks to say, and yet I, I somehow am unable to vote in person. Well, uh, I mean, a, a lot of the people that are sleeping over in the DMV lines, that's the only family vacation that people are allowed uh, to go on in New Jersey under Phil Murphy's uh, uh, rules. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, again, I mean, he's making our state unlivable. Uh, as if COVID wasn't hard enough, you have all these policies that just make it unlivable. Uh, and now it's almost unvotable because we don't know if, you know, your vote by mail, it's not like you signed up for it. It's just coming. And we don't know if the post office is going to be able to handle it. And they can blame whoever they want to for that. But the reality is the post office has had problems for decades and, uh, and, and decades. And even Dr. Fauci, who everybody, almost everybody in this country loves Dr. Fauci. Uh, Dr. Fauci even said there's no reason not to have uh, in-person voting with safety precautions, and most other states are going to do that. But Phil Murphy, you know, seems to be in his own planet, Murphy world, uh, and unfortunately we're going along with him for the ride. Well, I think the one thing we all agree on is that it's important that everybody does vote. And however we're able to do that, I know there is a lawsuit pending now um, that the president and, and others have joined in on to fight that law. But however we're able to, it's, uh, it's critically important. I think you and I would both agree that everybody does uh, get out or stay home to vote. And speaking of the election, uh, there was some news on the endorsement front. The state PBA has made some endorsements. Rather historic. Go on, Josh. You, oh, so, uh, you know, is, is in, a, in a spate of... I don't believe it's ever happened before type history. The New Jersey Policeman Benevolence Association uh, endorsed uh, the, the president uh, and a host of congressional candidates, uh, all Republican. Uh, and it's thought that this is pushback against the, the Democrats sort of uh, anti-cop attitude, anti-law and order attitude right now. Um, I don't know the full list of those, uh, those congressional candidates. Maybe you do. Sure. So uh, per the endorsement, it was five congressional candidates. Uh, Tom Kane, oh, we have a guest here, and that's all right. Would you like to be on? No, uh, uh, Tom Kane, uh, Tom Kane Jr., uh, Rosemary Becky, uh, Jeff Van Drew, uh, co sitting Congressman Chris Smith, and uh, and two local legislators. Oh, David Richter in the uh, third district, and then two state legislators uh, in uh, Senator Bucco and Assemblywoman uh, Ora Dunn. Uh, so you're absolutely right. Uh, that's a change of pace for the unions to endorse in that way. Oh, yeah, uh, and time. and uh, we'll see what impact that has. Um, it's important for people to remember we do have all of our congressional seats are up this year. Our Senate race is up. Uh, Rick Mehta and, uh, and Cory Booker are on the ballot this year. And then we have a special election in Morris County, uh, and that's Congress in, in the uh, legislative district uh, with Senator Bucco and Assemblywoman Ora Dunn uh, seeking full, full term. So it's, it's definitely an, an exciting time to be in New Jersey, even if uh, we're mostly bored because of COVID. <laughs> uh, obviously, we're not bored here. We're at the Beer Garden. It's a great place. Uh, but uh, and again, like everybody that's watching, you know my politics. Uh, but uh, I don't begrudge you if you vote differently. Just remember to vote. It's our civic duty, and you should vote for the candidate that speaks to you, not for the 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 least bad option. Vote for the one that really speaks to your heart. Wouldn't you agree with that? I would. I would. And get to know the candidates. Uh, learn. There's a, so much out there now as they all pivot to the social media. And more than that, and perhaps most importantly. Come to Hoboken and come to the beer garden. I think you'll find Josh. Yes, uh, you will. He's here. I will uh, be here. I believe at almost least every once day. a week, not every uh, day. Uh, th there's some dispute. I've asked some folks, but it's a it's a great spot and a lot of fun. And so, uh, thank you. And Josh, uh, I hope we can do this again. This was quite a lot oh, of fun. I look forward to it. You so much better than the usual host of the segment. Ah, yes. Well, uh, I'll take that. I'll take that. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll be right back. Thinking about a family vacation or class reunion. Are you stressed over whether or not you should take a vacation? M-Share Family Fun Travel is a full-service travel agency specializing in family and group travel, dedicated to ensure you're provided with the right options to meet your travel needs. I'm Dottie Smith, and I've been servicing clients in New Jersey, Philadelphia, Florida, and California. So I'm here to help you make your travel experience a memorable one. M-Share Family Fun Travel, cherish today for tomorrow's memories. Welcome back to The Pulse with Peter B. I'm Nicoletta Ayala, and here for the first time ever in the guest seat, we have the man himself, Peter Biancomano. Nicolette, is I'm all confused here. I mean, <laughs> you know, you got Greg telling me to hold a microphone <laughs> with my left hand. I mean, I don't do anything with my left hand. I mean, I hey. lean a little lot, as the audience knows, but that's about it. Nicolette, that host chair? has never looked so good. Let me tell you that Peter, much. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Except for when I'm in it. No! <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Peter. So I figured we'd just dive right in. Uh, not sure if the viewers know, uh, but you do work for a sports network as your day job. 
I uh, just kind of wanted to know more or less a little bit about you and, you know, what made you get into television. I do, boy, and I love how Nicolette is being <laughs> so cautious with her questions. I mean, <laughs> you could tell this is the first time she's doing it and, and you have started on fire. Nicolette, you're doing a fantastic job. So, Nicolette, so I, yes, I do. My daytime job is I do work for SNY, okay. of course, which stands for Sportsnet New York. And it is the cable home of the Mets, the Jets, and all things New York sports. Um, <laughs> Okay, now I'm, I got lost. What was your first, second question there? It was, your uh, it was what made you want to uh, get into television. Yeah, no, it's it's a very, very good question, Nicolette. I, you know, ever since I was a little kid, growing up in my father's Italian delicatessen, of course, located in 11th and Washington, Hoboken, you're not going to want to miss that, uh, or you're not going to want to uh, uh, not want to go there and try his fresh mozzarella. But ever since I was growing up, I liked to entertain. I kind of looked at my dad and my mom okay. the way they were salespeople in the deli. Okay. And, you know, especially my father and of course mom I love you to death but especially my father he was really the salesman with his Italian accent I mean and things like that and I felt like you know more than providing great food to his customers he would provide entertainment value to his customers okay, and okay. I, think, I think you know because he was so personable that's really the w why people kept coming back. And I looked at that, and I was a huge fan of TV. You can ask my parents. I used to sit in front of the TV. They used to yell at me, you're going to need glasses and all <laughs> that, you know, growing up. Right. Um, and, and I watched entertainers on TV, whether that's sports entertainers, whether that's anybody else. And I just really wanted to kind of follow in their footsteps. I watch a game, whether it be at the NHL, the NFL, MLB, or anything like that, and I'm really focused on what the commentators are saying. Of course you know the action on the field or the ice course, or anything like of that course, of course. is uh is is paramount right. but the way they describe it is just to me you know sets people above anything else because you know you can go to a bar you can get lit or things like is that the way the kids say <laughs> yes, it the, 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 <laughs> these days rather um and 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 you know but when you're at home you're not watching a game on mute you're listening to these, uh, to Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, you know what I'm that's saying? Right, to that's Doc right. Emmerich and Eddie Ocheck, to Joe Buck in baseball and, and Tim right. McCarver and things like that. Right, I'm sorry, right. I could go on and on and on, Nicola, <laughs> as you could see. So it's totally okay, it's totally okay. So you mentioned that obviously you love sports. Um, you know, what, did you play any sports growing up in your I'm childhood, sure in high school, in college? Yeah, I mean, it's so funny because uh, there's this old joke that a lot of these people that go into like sports TV and commentary, mm -hmm. you know, there are the people, the former athletes who are like the color guys, right. the color commentators, as they say. Of course. Um, and then there are analysts out there who never played sports. They were kind of just the guys keeping score in, uh, right. on, the, on the sidelines and things like that. And absolutely, I played sports. I was a soccer and hockey player. Of course, my parents were born in Italy. Ah, so, uh, Italy. you know, exactly. You like that? Italia. Yes, Italia. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, uh, hockey's my passion. Okay. I love playing hockey goalie and, and, and all of that. Okay, okay. Um, it is a fantastic sport to play, and more people should play it. Um, but, yeah, I, I did grow up, you know, playing those sports. And, really, I, I do believe that if you do play those sports, you can have a better grasp when you're analyzing those sports of course. for your day job. Of you course, know? of course. So. What position uh, did you play hockey? Yeah, no, sure. I was a go hockey goalie, so okay. I got a lot of pucks to the head. This Oof. is why, I don't know if people on the Pulse notice, I Oof. stumble a lot on my <laughs> words. I mean, uh, you fine. know, I mean, concussion protocols weren't a thing back then. Right, right. But um, <laughs> they certainly are a thing now. Uh, and in uh, soccer, I played left back. Okay. Uh, following in my father's footsteps, he was a left there back. You go. Really? Yeah, yeah, didn't yeah, know exactly. that. Didn't know that. Exactly. Love you, Dad. Love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, so what's your second like favorite sport aside from hockey what's your second favorite sport well or you know third I, and so on uh, yeah absolutely i am a huge and don't tell the guys at SNY this <laughs> but you know baseball's probably like a third i mean okay. um and that's okay they want okay. people who are not you know gung-ho about sports uh, and I keep smacking my leg. I'm so not used to holding the microphone. <laughs> I'm, I'm like abusing myself. On t I'm just nervous because I have a lovely, lovely uh, host today. Anyway, um, I love the NFL. NFL. I love football. Never played it, but I love football. Well, speaking of NFL, are you looking forward to this upcoming fall for the NFL season? It's going to be different, I okay. think. I mean, obviously, most stadiums uh, are not allowing fans. I know. Here in New Jersey, the Jets and the Giants right. are not allowing fans. That's right. That's but, right. But, you know, I am a diehard. And I think that the audience and some of the audience uh, members that 
home know this, Nicolette, but I am a hmm. diehard <laughs> Dallas Cowboy fan. America's team, folks. You if go. you're not liking the Cowboys, then you're just not a fan of America. Hey, That's the way hey. I look at it, okay? Hey, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll um, agree to disagree, Pete. Uh, we'll agree. Well, Nicolette, well, you know, who do Listen, you like? Listen, I love my Patriots. Oh. Diehard New England fan, and even though Brady did leave New England and he's in Tampa, Still going to be a Brady fan at heart. I'm still going to be a New Englander at heart. I, well, as, well, as, as, Ashley Yorker, Rolo, but. <laughs> as Ashley Rolo once said on the show, Tampa Bay, right? Tampa Bay, and now you got Gronk there. That's right. It's going to be you, interesting. By the way, did that just totally break your heart when you saw it's them? It's funny. The day that that news came out, it was actually St. Patty's Day. I remember that when Tom Brady put out this you know, statement he was no longer going to be a Patriot. And, it, you know, I feel like as a Pats fan, of course, we don't want to see him go to another team. But... You know, you, you, you want to prosper in life. You want to experience a little bit more things. So I understand completely. Yeah, I don't know. I respect it. Now, I feel like people love to hate the Patriots because they love to hate my Cowboys, right? Can you imagine Cowboy Patriots? Super Bowl? Oh, oh. 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 my goodness. <laughs> you know, John John Smith, who's our other production assistant on the Pulse, you know, he's a big Eagle fan. I don't Shout know out to why. John. Exactly. <laughs> I, I call them the Dirty Birds and things like that. I don't even think he'll watch that Super Bowl, right? I think he would. I think he would. You think he would? I think he would. Ah, maybe he would. I maybe think he would. would. I think he would. Maybe he would. Exactly. So exactly. Peter, do yeah. you actually participate in fantasy football? Now that we're I on the football don't. topic? Um, I used to participate in fantasy football, but my problem is either I would get all the Cowboys. Okay. And that, as you know, that is not a strategy to do in, uh, oh, in fantasy football. Oh, I know. Football. Listen, I don't. But I'm a guy. How many times do you hear? And how annoying is this? Oh, my God. I really need, I don't know, Dak Prescott in my fantasy team. And I'm like, shut up. I'm just rooting for my team. Can I say shut up on the air? Because I just did. <laughs> right or wrong? Right. I no. think it's like more of an annoyance than anything. Right. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I feel personally, at least for me, I don't usually draft too many people, like players from the Patriots. You know, they're my team. I'm very biased for other teams as well. But I also... Uh, more or less, like, I try to at least just draft one person from my team. I don't go with the whole roster. So how good are you in fantasy, Miss Ayala? Well, as of right now, I am a two-time champ wow. within one league, and I've been in the league for three years now. Look at that. So. Look at that. And I have to tell you, Nicolette, she's been a production assistant on the show since May, June? May, I forget, May. I forgot That's what right, it is. May. I mean, you've always impressed me with your sports knowledge. Thank and, you. Uh, and I work in a sports network. And trust <laughs> me, some of the half these guys are like, like, you know, did you even like follow what you're looking at? Right, right. So, I mean, great job overall. Definitely do. I have my draft coming up Monday after Memorial. Or Tuesday, sorry, after Labor Day. After wow. Labor, yeah, I was Labor say, Day. Yeah, Labor Day. Yeah, we're going to reverse. We don't right. want to reverse in time right. for COVID days, uh, right? I don't know. I love summer, though. But I Dude. love fall. Fall is my is my season. I like that. I like that a lot. All yes, right. Yes. So now, Nicolette, let me, I, I'm going to ask you, is that allowed? Can I ask you a question? Oh, uh, yeah, we got a couple seconds. You can All ask right. me a question. Here is the question for you. Okay. See, folks, I can't, I can't uh, be a guest. I have to host. I mean, even though I'm in the host chair, but, it, you know. And it's never looked any better, like I said. Your favorite person on the Pulse with Peter B to work with. Boom. Oh, it would have to be Greg Schultz. Oh, come on. It would I'm have to be right Greg here. Schultz. I'm just kidding, Peter. Oh, I'm just kidding. Oh, my goodness. Listen, I love everyone on the show. Love everyone on the show. Except for Josh, right? Nobody likes Josh. I love Josh. Josh knows oh, everyone. <laughs> All right, goodness. Peter, we are actually running out of time. I we did, are. Yes. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> I actually did want to say thank you, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and for talking with me. Uh, look forward. Hopefully, we could do this again in the future. We would love to have you in the future. Thank you. Join us next week for The Pulse on everything you need to know. I'm Nicolette Ayala. Have a great week, everyone. Thinking about a family vacation or class reunion? Are you stressed over whether or not you should take a vacation? M-Share Family Fun Travel is a full-service travel agency specializing in family and group travel, dedicated to ensure you're provided with the right options to meet your travel needs. I'm Dottie Smith, and I've been servicing clients in New Jersey, Philadelphia, Florida, and California. So I'm here to help you make your travel experience a memorable one. M-Share Family Fun Travel, cherish today for tomorrow's memories.